Uh, welcome to crypto insurance as an asset class. If you're uh, lingering in the back and you want to come in, my talk just started. Um, my name is Danielle Wall Elliott. I fell down the crypto rabbit hole in 2014. Um, I've attended every ETH Denver, so I'm so excited to welcome you to Denver. Um, this is massive. I'm overwhelmed by all the sites and the people. It's so exciting to have you here in Denver and us to have graduated to such a large uh, conference. My experience in crypto, I started at Shapeshift in 2016. Shapeshift was a digital asset exchange. We wanted to be as non-custodial as possible, so it's a bit like a vending machine. Put in one token, get out another. Uh, our ethos, our foundation was no KYC, no accounts, no custody. Now, this changed. The regulators came down, the business was pretty much gutted with all of its volume, um, and they really had to redesign themselves. So took KYC for a while, that wasn't great. Decided they were able to use uh, decentralized exchanges, uh, ThorChain, ZeroX, and really offer that same platform. Then they took it a step further. Hey, if we don't need to do KYC for exchanges, maybe we don't need to have a full business, maybe they can go full DAO. So I was able to work there for six years doing the operations and treasury management of over $100 million. And uh, I learned so much about crypto, going through the bear and bull markets, you know, growing a team from 12 up to 150, back down to 75, um, taught me a lot about what it is to be in crypto, what the foundation is, you know, what, what I believe in. Now I'm the COO at Names. Names is a digital insurance marketplace. Um, what we believe is that Insurance is going to be this missing link, this gateway uh, that crypto needs for mass adoption. Uh, so I'll get into that a bit more as I go on. Um, I'm currently the co-host of The Missing Link, a podcast where we discuss crypto and insurance, how it all comes together and talk to you know, founders and leaders in the space. Um, would love to have you subscribe or take a listen. So, you know... What you need to know about me is I have a passion for decentralization and taking power away from governments and corporations and banks and returning that power back to individuals. Very passionate about the crypto space and this global economy that we're all building together. Today, my talk is going to, we're, we're going to talk about some problems. One, the crypto industry is severely underinsured. Uh, custodians can't afford enough insurance to protect its users. Um, and individual crypto insurance, that's kind of my take, is like, that's the future. Uh, why would we trust these custodians any more than we already do uh, to protect us when we can protect ourselves? Uh, the overall insurance and reinsurance industry needs capacity. Um, and so they're always looking for alternative sources of capital. Well, we think they can find that in the crypto ecosystem. Uh, risking your capital for reinsurance via names or just this overarching crypto insurance ecosystem is a tokenized real world asset that's earning real, uh oh, hold on, technical difficulties. Hey, there we go, thank you. You guys give me a sign if it goes back out, okay. All right, so start that point over. So, you know, risking capital for reinsurance allows this tokenized real world asset that's actually earning real yield on an uncorrelated risk to the market. So, what does that mean? Uh, you know, the hurricane isn't paying attention to what the stock market's doing. You know, uh, the car insurance opportunity, you know, the cars don't care what the uh, S&P is doing, if they're gonna break down, if they're gonna get in an accident. So investing in insurance gives you a diversified portfolio, which I think we all could use. I'll wrap with my prediction, which is in the future, I believe that there'll be, you know, basket assets, wrapped assets that give you exposure to many different insurance risks. So the current crypto insurance landscape uh, less than 1% of all crypto is covered and insured, and less than 3% uh, in DeFi. So DeFi does have some more opportunities than uh, traditional crypto. And there's a huge market opportunity for us to realize. So 
One point is it's mostly insured in dollars. So if you've tried to sign up for like a Fireblocks account or some custodian account, they will tout, oh, we have $50 million in insurance. And I'm like, oh, is that, is that for me, for, for my account? No, that's, that's across the board for the whole, uh, anyone that's you know, having funds with this custodian. We all know what the crypto market can do. We know it can double overnight. That's not unheard of. So, you know, insuring in dollars, I don't think is the most effective way to do this. Uh, I believe in native token amounts, which you can do if you're doing the policies on chain, uh, that's the future. We all know the hacks in 2021, uh, you know, they accounted for 2.6 billion in losses, 10 billion in the wider crypto space. Uh, obviously, 2022, we're still uh, racking up the numbers there, but it's way, way past that. Um, I think most of us, when we're thinking about our dollars, we don't typically think about insuring it. But the rest of our lives is like wholly insured. You're insuring you know, your health, your car, your house, your concert tickets, your flights, every aspect of your life we see insurance in. And um, you know, find for dollars, maybe in the US, you have FDIC insurance. Um, maybe if you have cash at home, maybe your homeowner's insurance might cover it a bit. Um, but why not, if, if we're all about self-sovereignty, if we're all about responsibility of our own crypto, why would we not be insuring our crypto, especially if we're taking really big risks? Uh, the current crypto insurance landscape, I picked three players out to highlight. I think Nexus Mutual is the one I always hear the most about. Um, and so to tell you, they, are shared, they have shared risk as a mutual. They eliminate the need for an insurance company. And they utilize their DAO and a token to vote on the validity of claims. Another standout and star uh, in the insurance landscape right now is Insurace, also a DAO. Um, they have 142 protocols actually protected. So you can go there right now and uh, get insurance for some of these at the bottom, cold wallet coverage, custodian risk, smart contract vulnerabilities. Um, the reason I say they're the star or standout in the space is they've actually paid out. They've proven that it works. So they paid out uh, almost $12 million to 155 UST DPEG cover holders. So people that saw, okay, Tara, maybe it's a little risky. Uh, bam, they, they were made whole. Uh, breach. Uh, I got a breach policy. It's the most easy insurance policy I've ever gotten. You know, I love to tout uh, self-custody, but, you know, I believe custodians have a space, or, you know, have a place in our space. Um, and so I was able to get, uh, you know, policy for, I have some crypto on one of these uh, exchanges, and it was super easy, you know, really clear, affordable, um, and it gives me that extra layer of protection. So we talked about some, I mentioned some of these, but I'll say it again. So what you can get right now, um, and albeit is a small industry, but cold wallet coverage, custodian risks, uh, your smart contract vulnerabilities. Uh, I've, I've seen initial DEX, DEX offerings, so it's kind of like the ICO when you're first investing in a token. Um, Stablecoin DPEG, and then NFTs. I, I see that a lot as being like a hot, hotter topic uh, in the space. Oh, I gotta go faster. Whew. All right. Custodians need insurance. So they're, they're getting it, it's out there. We talked about that. You know, this is an example of copper, got a $500 million uh, insurance cover. It covers you know, their assets and cold storage, um, cover against employee collusion, third party theft, physical loss or damage to the digital, digital assets. Uh, this cover was organized by Aon. Aon is the largest UK insurer by market cap. So they're from the traditional space and they're taking notice of the crypto world. They are participating. Um, I like to uh, talk about you know, CZ and Binance team. They're doing a form of self-insurance. So it's amazing, it sounds so good. Wow, a billion dollars of self-insurance in the SAFU fund, that sounds epic. And they've, they've used it, they've made their customers whole. But when you look at the exchange total holdings, it's about 75 billion. So if they have any large scale attack, uh, the SAFU fund's not gonna hold up. You know, there, I don't need to waste too much of my talk on this, but what the fuck, FTX, SBF, $10 billion of theft, 
And, you know, even if they would have had insurance, if it was actual negligence, you know, by the team, would that have even been covered? So then we see the contagion throughout the industry, BlockFi, Salt, and so on. Uh, so again, these custodians, we trust them uh, to some level, but could we trust them more if they had more uh, insurance coverage? I don't think that they could afford, nor could they find enough coverage to insure all their customers' assets. So uh, a few examples, okay, Coinbase, Bitstamp reportedly have some crime policies, BitGo, uh, FTX US had a $7.5 million policy from Aon. Again, these are drops in the bucket. What I believe is the future of this crypto insurance industry is that individuals are more likely candidates to get policies. So I foresee a pop-up for insurance, just like concert tickets, flights, and so on. We're already seeing this with some DeFi protocols. Uh, GMX uh, exchange allows liquidity providers to purchase coverage. You can see it there at the bottom. Purchase insurance right at the checkout step. Um, so why, you know, I feel like, I, I say this a lot, but like, my team, hi names team, we come to this, uh, these crypto conferences, we talk about insurance and it's kind of like, oh, insurance? Like that's, that's what you guys are doing? It's not very sexy. It is. Um, but then we go to these insurance conferences and they're like, crypto? Really? Crypto? That's what you're doing? It's like kind of like a joke. So we're right in this uh, middle stage. We've got one foot in the traditional space and one foot in the crypto space. Um, and I believe you know, why do we need insurance and crypto? One, to promote the mass adoption. Uh, institutions, you know, what are they waiting for? They always talk about how it's so risky. Well, how can we, you know, bring that risk down? Insurance, uh, reducing the risk to investors. Uh, if a company is public, uh, they have a fiduciary responsibility, and so crypto seems risky, so if they can mitigate that risk. And then we all know crypto is a honeypot for bad actors. It's easy to misappropriate. So that crypto is gone. There's no customer support to call. Um, so you know why not protect your uh, risks? Why does the traditional insurance world need crypto or blockchains? So traditional insurance, it's old school. It's antiquated. Lloyd's of London's been around for like 300 years. Um, you know. Let's move it into the 21st century. Let's, let's use these tools that we all know and love. Uh, insurers, they don't let liabilities sit on their balance sheet. They get reinsurance. So hedge funds, pensions, they put up this capital as reinsurance. They earn a return from premium payments, and they're on the hook if something happens. If a claim uh, needs to happen, their capital gets used. But these positions are not liquid in the traditional markets. And so let's take that hurricane example again. If the hurricane's off the coast, well, they're just gonna have to deal with it. If it's tokenized, if it's on chain and it's tradable, then you know, now there's a market to go in and out of these positions. Uh, just yeah, making it more accessible, opening up this idea that they can have access to this alternative capital. I said this earlier, but crypto and cannabis are the punchlines at the insurance conferences. They say, oh, there's not enough data for crypto insurance. That's all we have. We got data coming out of our ears. It's all on chain. We have chain analysis to tell us about these hacks. Um, we are tracking it. So I, I actually don't think the problem is not enough data. It's just not enough education on how to utilize the data. So if you'll forgive me, I'll do a quick shill of names. So names, what we're working on, uh, call it powerfully smart risk transfer. Um, we are using the Ethereum blockchain to facilitate efficient insurance processes, um, you know, outsourcing the trust to smart contracts, um, allowing you to write your coverage in native assets so you can insure your ETH in ETH. Um, Again, this idea that new sources of capital, the insurance industry needs new sources of capital. Hey, we need to have real yield on our crypto. I'm sick of fake yield. I'm sick of rewards. I'm sick of pump and dumps. I want my crypto to earn real yield on real world assets. Um, also, it taps into this uncorrelated investment opportunity. Again, holding this insurance risk diversifies your portfolio more fully. Um, it allows you to earn these real yields, uh, again, uncorrelated to the market. All right. 
And my last uh, prediction here, um, so with this idea that you can have native tokenized risk, um, so right now with names, okay, like I said, we're kind of in this um, one foot in centralized, like we're fully regulated, the capital that comes in has to be accredited investors, um, but I, being this kind of like, how can we give access to the full wider crypto market? So my prediction is, either through us, through other methods in this space, there'll be index tokens. There'll be these basket tokens that can represent a portion of you know, each of these cells, each of these risks, and users can just buy one token uh, that gives them this diversified exposure to multiple insurance risk, and you don't have to be the fully accredited, you know, do, do the whole deep dive into the industry. So that's where I see it going. Um, again, I love to just say like, I want crypto to mature. I want crypto to actually have something that backs it to give us the yield so that we can have a sustainable industry long term rather than these like really big like spikes and peaks, the ICO boom, you know, DeFi summer. It's like let's build these sustainable long term uh, yields. And, you know, I think insurance is the way to do that. One of the ways. So to reiterate, um, the crypto industry is severely underinsured. Um, you can go out and find some policies on your own, and I would recommend doing that rather than relying on these custodians for you. Um, one, they can't afford enough insurance to protect all of the users, and you know, we're, we value self-sovereignty, we value responsibility in ourselves, so let's take that um, responsibility on and, and, and insure our own assets. The insurance and reinsurance industry, it needs capacity and it's looking for alternative capital. And in crypto, we have that capital, we have it, we want to earn yields on our, um, on our crypto. So I think that they're a match made in heaven. Uh, risking capital for reinsurance is earning yield on an uncorrelated to the market risk. And my prediction in the future is that we will have more widespread access to like the whole, crypt the whole crypto industry will be able to buy this like basket asset or index asset um, that could give you exposure to many different insurance risks. Um, I'll wrap up and say thank you so much, ETH Denver, John Pollard, Danny, um, Kent, my friends, people that I've uh, worked with for many, many years. Thank you for putting this on for us. It's a gorgeous event. Thank you all for coming. Follow me on Twitter and a shameless plug for the podcast again, the missing link, wherever you subscribe to podcast. Thank you.